Our today's word is but rather thanksgiving. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3 to 4. So we can read together two, or, two verses. Go, but among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. Everyone says, Amen. Let's pray one more time. Father, thank you, Lord God. In this moment, we want to hear your voice. We come to you, Lord. So now, we're ready to hear your voice, and we're ready to obey your word. Father, speak to us and bless all our church family who listen to your word this morning. Thank you, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Our, our today's word is rather thanksgiving. Uh, we uh, keep talking about Ephesians chapter 5. One man, and he, uh, in this summertime, he has a vacation. I don't know. He, he took a bus, and then he, he going to Protodale in Florida. And in, in the bus, so many people were the vacation and enjoy beach in, in the summertime. And then, but this man with ragged clothes and his face is unhappy faith, face. So one lady is wondered and he, she came to him and asked him, what happened? What's your name? Where are you going? And she find out his name is Bingo. And she, he staying four years in prison, and he is now going back to home. But you know what? He wrote a letter to his wife. Four years, he, he, he felt guilty to his wife, and he wrote a letter, if you forgive me, I'm going now home, if you forgive me. Please tie your yellow handkerchiefs on the oak tree. Then when I see the yellow handkerchiefs, I'll get off the bus and I'll meet you. But if there is no handkerchiefs, I understand you did not forgive me. So I just pass on the bus. So he said about the, the lady in, in, in the bus. And all the bus, the people in the bus, they were so excited and tensioned. And, and they, they hold their Breath and they waiting until they see the oak tree. The finally they they see the oak tree. Do you think there is a one yellow handkerchief in there? You know what? All the people in the bus they stand up and they shout and with joy and they say that they see this. It's all kind of a, you know, all trees with a yellow handkerchief and he couldn't miss it. He get off and, and the, his wife stand on the, under the oak tree with tears and they hug. You know, this is a real story I heard that is so touched by all the people. You know, this story talk about one prodigal son. He squandered all the father's money and he returning back with a beggar, nothing. He hurt his father's heart, but he returning back. Seems like God, the father, never forgive him. Seems like God forsake him. But what happened in the Bible said that the father waiting every single day for his son. You know, even though we fail. We just fall down and made a lot of mistake. We know that who we are. Even though God said, you are dearly beloved, my son and my daughter. You are so blessed. You are my chosen. Even though God say that we easily fail. We know that. But you, one thing you should know, that remember that. God, your father, always waiting for you. If you walk away from God, far away now, it's time to turn back. Time to turn back. You know, uh, during uh, two Sundays, we talk about Ephesians chapter 5. So, 
we are his his beloved children and we are so blessed and we live a life of love because Jesus Christ become what living sacrifice for us fragrance offering for us so now we are holy now we are beloved God's children so we should not reveal reveal in our heart what is that Ephesians chapter 5 3 Maybe we can read again. Go. But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of greed because these are improper, proper for God's holy people. Amen. Amen. You know, even though we are holy people, but we are so used to, our past life. What that is? What is that? Sexual immorality or impurity or greedy in our life. But as a holy people of God and good Christian could not do a hint of sexual immorality. Not just not just doing but just to, saying a little hint no this is not proper for all the holy people you know the bible says first is Thessalonians chapter 4 and 3 and 4 5 says that what is God said it is God's will amen what is that it is God's will your God, your Father has will. I want you to do that. I want you not do that. What is God's will for you? It is will, God's will that you should be sanctified. Amen. God wants you to be holy. God wants you to be holy. God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, for you because God wants you to be holy. And, and, and what is the Bible said? That you should avoid sexual immorality. That each of you should learn to control. Say it again. That each of you should learn to control his own body. Sometimes we misunderstand about gospel. Oh, Jesus died for me. I'm free. So whatever I can do, I commit a sin, it's okay? No, it's not okay. If you knew God, you glorify Him. If you knew God, if you know who God is, you glorify Him. You never against God's will. What is God's will? Your purity. Your just. Your holy. Your sanctified. So God, the Bible asks us, okay, each of you should learn to control his own body. Sometimes we not control our body. Oh, I'm freedom, so whatever I do, it's okay. No, it's not okay. We should learn to control our own body in a way that is holy and honorable. Amen. What is verse 5? We can read together. Go, not in passionate lust, like a hidden. Who do not know God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Before you know God. Before you come to Jesus Christ. Be before you born again. This is easily we did. We are not in passionate lust like hidden. No. No more. Who do not know God. We know God. Amen. Amen. You know, at the time, in, in, when uh, Apostle Paul wrote a letter, efficient letter to Ephesus Church, that circumstance of most period is very sexually improper. There's so many idol worshippers in there. In, in the temple, when, when, when you walk out in the if, Ephesus, there is a temple that they worship and honor Diana, the goddess. They're worshiping and their ceremony is very lustful. You know, 
people, men and women and men and men, is they they really terrible thing in happening in their worshiping and ceremony. No, but one thing you should know: so many people in the city, many citizens, they they looking at that and oh, they doing lust for thing and sexual immorality and their heart is obesity is always that. It's, it seems like it's okay. Because everyone do that. They're so used to it. No, same as these times. When you when you watch the TV and movie and drama and so many worse things, lustful things, and sexual immorality and so many things in there. And the more you see that, the more you watch that, the more your heart. It's okay. Without marriage, it's okay. All kind of sexual immorality is okay because they used about it. But we should shouldn't forget about who you are. We are holy God's children. We should resemble our Father God. You know, we should think about it's not okay. According to the Bible, if you believe the word of God, God say to you, no, my son, no, my daughter, then you should accept that God's, what is God's will is, not what his word say. This word say to you, it's okay, but it's not okay. Because of that, your Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross. He shed all the blood for you because of that. Now, now we cling to that. We pursue the worldly things again. No. That is, that is what we do not know. When we do not know God. So now it's time to pursue God alone. Pursue God alone. You know, uh, A.J. Jacob, he's a journalist. He, he, he wrote lots of books. He has so many experiments. Like um, one month, uh, he become a become a woman. He wear like a beautiful woman. He uh, he trying to be a model model uh, in, in the uh, United States. And and one of them, the book is uh, whatever think in your heart. Just uh, frankly say to people whatever in his heart. Just say. Just say and say for one month. Any thoughts, just say. Oh, you look ugly. Oh, you look whatever, whatever in, 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 in his heart and in his mind is just saying it to people. You know what? For one month, he, after he one month, he said that, he, he, he say that the worst month of my life life why because he knew that we are sinners all the sinners heart is always crooked word comes out crooked thought comes out sinful heart sinful word comes out if you say everything if you do whatever you do if you see woman and man and lust for thought and if you want to do if you want to say what is the Bible said? Control. Control your body. Because you are not who you were. You are my child, holy children. You know, uh, Apostle Paul keeps saying that verse 4, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 4, he said that nowhere should there be obscenity, foolish talk. Or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. But rather thanksgiving. You know what? We shouldn't do that. This word, this is so out of place. You know, in, in a movie and everything look cool, and you if you say curse and F word to someone else and and, and it, Course joking to someone else, this is so bad. Have you been have you harassed by someone someone else 
by some word. So filthy heart. So dirty heart. It's so feeling very bad. The good Christian could not harass to someone else or give a coarse joking or foolish talk or obscenity, any word for that. What if, just think about, as a pastor, we, we're same Christian, right? The pastor who preached the gospel. You preached the gospel. We are all same believer of God. But what if pastor always say the cursing word? Always say that F word? Do you think I'm a proper being a pastor? Maybe you said, no, you are not. How could a pastor keep saying F word and all cursing word? No, you are not. Yeah, I know. Not only for me, for all the Christians, all the believers. If you keep saying that obscenity word and foolish talk and coarse jerking, this is no good. We should know that, who we are. Who we are. You know, I will show you one picture. Do you know what that is? Salad on her teeth. You know, one man have a good meeting is a very important person. He, he to treat him with a steak in maybe dog house and and in a very famous restaurant and they order steak and steak. I'm getting hungry now. It's steak and with, with some potatoes and broccoli and they get giggling and saying and so many good good talk and. But the very important person, he looking at me, just an example, he looking at me and so smiley face and looking at me, so what happened? And this man and went to the bathroom and he looking at the mirror, there is a broccoli between the teeth. Like this to her. Okay, story begin now. But this man, even though he saw the green colored one between his teeth, he didn't pick that out. With this greeny things and then go back to table and smile and eat together with him. Nobody do that. No one do that. What is the Bible said? James chapter 1. 23, anyone who listens to the word but does not do what he says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. He forget about it. This is funny, right? This is and after looking at him, himself goes away and immediately forgets what it looks like. He forget about it, what he has. But he have to he have to take take uh, green green things out. You know what his Bible said. Anyone who listens to the words, but does not do what he says, is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror. Does not do. You know, we are God's holy people. We shouldn't say coarse language. We shouldn't say, we shouldn't do the sexual immorality. But even though you read the Bible, even though you listen to word, even though you say, I love God, I believe in Jesus, then you do the same things who you were, used to be. No, we are not. We are not. You know, what is a proper word for the believers? What, what is a proper word for the holy people? But rather, thanksgiving. Amen. In our heart, always give a thanks to God. You know, thank. In, in Greek language, eucharistia. Remember that charis is grace. Eucharist meaning is 
praise. Eucharistia meaning is thankfulness. You know, Eucharistia meaning is good grace, good happiness, good happiness grace. That is Eucharistia. Think about it. If that charis, charis is grace or thank, and charis is on God's hands, that is we call that is grace. The charis on our hands to give to God, that is, we call that is thank. So in Spanish, you know, thank is gracious, grace, gracious. So, it, you know, we give thanks to God. We remember that God's grace, then we give God thankfulness. And in Greek, Hebrew language, thankfulness, remember. Uh, Psalm 103, verse 2 says, we can read together. Go, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Amen. Amen. What is that? Thankfulness in Greek, Hebrew language? Remember, forget not what God has done for you. You know, if you forget, forget not is thankfulness. If you forget all God's grace, we call that is ungrateful. We buy the hand who feeds you. You know, think about it. We we. Should be like Jesus. What is Jesus' thankfulness? Jesus' thankfulness. Remember that? One of the story is that when Jesus preached the gospel, so many people, even 5,000 people with men and women and children, more than 10,000 and 15,000 people gather up and they listen the word of God through Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus speaking to them the kingdom of God for a long time. They're, they're listening and focusing after Jesus finished word. Maybe almost a day later, they're hungry. They, they felt hungry. I'm hungry. But in there, no food. Nobody bring the food and just listen to the word of God. In this situation, Jesus said to his disciples, How do you feed them? You know, disciples wondered, how do you feel them? There's lots of people. It's too much money. We, we don't have that money. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You know, sometimes in our situation, I don't know what to do. What should I do? What should I do? You know, in this situation, little boy bring what? Lunchbox. A tiny five bread and two fish for his lunch. And the little boy gave to Jesus Christ. Jesus, you know what? This is my lunch. I want to share to you. And what did Jesus say that? John chapter 6, 11. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. As much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. Gave thanks. Think about it. Nothing happened yet. Just five bread and two fish. Just, just tiny things. This bread, the basket really big. But actually the, the boy's lunch basket is little. And Jesus gave thanks. It's nothing happened yet. He gave thanks first by faith. You know, Jesus' disciples, maybe if I were Jesus, I mean the Jesus' disciple. What? You give thanks with this five bread and two fish. Have you seen this 5,000 people with men, all men alone? How could feed all of them with these tiny things? Instead of you give thanks you do something, or you should complain. You, you people just come with nothing? Bring your food. Maybe, maybe one of our, if I one of our Jesus disciples, maybe say some solutions. What should I do? Sell the money it's, and it's property and, and, and they buy some food? You know, Jesus 
should be our example or our faith. In all these circumstances, nothing happened, but Jesus gave thanks by faith. That faith become reality. The faith become come true in our life. What is your faith? Once you see something and you give thanks, no. That is, that is thankfulness without faith. Good. You, you can give thanks. It's good. But you just thankfulness. Thanking with faith. So sometimes we couldn't see. But we give thanks, God. Lord God, even though we got nothing. But I give thanks to you, Lord, with faith. Because we believe that, I believe that, God, you are provider. You never forget me. You never forget our family. You never forget our culture and great church. You never forget this culture and belly people. Father, I give glory. I give thanks to all the people who will come to you, God. Amen. Amen. You know, in this pandemic time, we want to see the miracle. How could we see the miracle? We can give thanks to God with faith. Amen. Well, one other thing, and, and this is the story. Jesus, before he uh, going to cross, his last dinner with his disciples. And what he said um, it was a surprise. Verse 26 to 26, what his Bible said, while they were eating, Jesus took bread. And what? gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take it, it and this is my body. And then he took the cup, gave thanks and offered it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. You know, they already have food and bread and wine. You know what? Why did you just give thanks? What on earth he give thanks? This bread is his body. This, this cup is blood. How could he give thanks to God? He knew that he will die on the cross and shed all the blood. His body tear down for the people, you. How could he give thanks by his sacrificed body? Can you do that? When you get suffered, when you get hard times, can you give thanksness to God? Thank you, Lord God, through this suffering. I don't know, but you will glorify through my sufferings. Can you say that? Can you say like a Job, Father, you take all the things out of my life, but nothing, I come this word. It's nothing. I come to you, Lord God. Can you praise God with your suffering, you do pain? You know, this is real, true thankness. Jesus Christ sacrificed himself and he gave thanks. He gave thanks. This is Jesus' life. This is Jesus' word. Then we are disciples of Jesus Christ. We should be like him. Instead of what we choose the hint of sexual immorality and all kind of lustful things, we choose the Jesus steps. Give thanks. Give thanks. So today, we heard today's word. But rather, you now beloved children of God. You, we, we should live a life of love. Then what should you do? We give thanks. Even though you hear, you heard the, today's word, you choose complain instead of thankfulness. Look at it. What is that? The mirror. You, you look at your mirror, and you looking at the mirror and who you are, and you forget about that who you are, the Holy One. You are beloved and. Dearly God's children, even though you look in the mirror and you turn away, you, you, you want to do 
all ways, worldly things, oh church, you are so blessed. You are so special. You are God's dearly children. Remember that. God loves you. We show our love to God. What is that? Just give thanks. This worship is one of thanksness to God. So we keep giving thanks. So next Sunday we'll see that. Oh, I want to see a kind of good testimony report from you. I give thanks and I saw many miracles because God is alive. I want to see that. I, I want to listen. All your good report and review about your practicing. Give thanks to God. Amen? In faith. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. When you pray to God, whatever in your situation, instead of your complaining, I want you do say, give thanks to God by faith. Lord God, I know this hard situation, but I give thanks to the Lord by faith. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for what you have done for us. And I looking at mirror who I am. I am God's dearly children. I am a blessed one. So, Lord, thank you. Give all the glory to you. Let's pray together. Oh, Father, thank you, Lord God. In this moment, we hear your voice, Lord God. We give all the thanks to you, Lord. Instead of we lost our thought and sanity and coarse language, Father, we would rather we give thanks to you, Lord God, by faith. Sometimes we face so many difficulties and we couldn't handle these problems and matters. But Lord, we give thanks by faith because God is our provider. God is our Lord. Father, Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Anything, Father, you pour out my cup overflows all the time. Thank you, Father, for your glory. Thank you, Father, for your word this morning. Whatever in our heart, whatever in our uh, circumstances, all kind of troubles and matters and problems and issues, Father, instead of we choose complaining, we choose to thank you to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this culture and virtues. Thank you for this worship. Thank you for this online service. Thank you, Father, for your glory. Thank you, glory for your children's house. Thank you, Father. Father, thank you for your glory. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Lord God, you are worthy to receive all our worship and thankfulness and praise. Father, thank you. You redeemed us as your children. So when we look at the mirror, we found out we are holy people of God. We are so dearly loved one of God. So Father, let not forget about who you are. We are not pursue all kind of lots of things but rather thanksgiving. Father, we give all the thanks to you, Lord, instead of complaining, instead of depressing. We give all thanks to you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Every single moment, you are so worthy to receive all our thankfulness, Lord. Thank you, Father. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love of Father God and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all forever and ever. Everyone says, Amen, Amen. Okay, God bless you. And I want you to have a good lunch after this Sunday service. And we want to see you next Sunday. And God bless you. Whatever your prayer, let me know. We can pray together. See you.